Before we start today's episode, we wanted to give a shout out to those Patreon supporters. And uh, we have a newcomer, yeah, new name, uh, Paul C. Thank you for uh, recently becoming a sponsor and a supporter of this show. And then we have our longtime supporters, Eric Sari, Andy Herbrand, Lauren L., and of course, Nate Hansen from Hansen Screen Printing. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate that. Now, Eric, can you cue up that music for us? Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Woo! Podcast, your weekly dose of the dairy state. We, of course, are your hosts, Eric. And I'm Russ. And today we have a super special episode. Uh, it is one of a kind, and it is to support uh, a very cool area of Milwaukee uh, and a very cool organization that kind of uh, deals with it. And then, of course, one of our favorite organizations, nonprofits that we've worked with a handful of times uh, as well. Uh, of course, we are talking about Menominee River Valley area. Uh, we are working with the Menominee Valley Partners and Rock the Green. Right and uh, uh, so we will have amazing interviews uh, with some really fine folks from all of those different organizations. Uh, we will also be talking with uh, a couple of the bands and members uh, that uh, will be involved in Valley Week, uh, which reminds me. This year, Valley Week is from September 25th to October 2nd, and uh, there is a number of really fine and cool events that you can uh, be in, involved in and participate in, uh, all being uh, in that uh, Menominee Valley area of Milwaukee, uh, which stretches, and then we'll talk about this more here in a little bit, but it stretches all the way from American Family Field all the way down to the Harley Davidson Museum and uh, by Iron Horse there. It is an absolutely cool and uh, uh, revitalized area that we're going to get into some of the history of that area uh, here in just a moment. Uh, but this thing is, uh, it's changed over the last you know couple decades yeah. incredibly uh, with the different parks and all the different restaurants and businesses that have kind of popped up down there, as well as breweries which hey you know right here at wisconsin drunken history we are massive fans of wisconsin brewing uh so we are going to uh, be able to sort of uh um i mean celebrate all of that great stuff yes. that's going on uh in in wisconsin but also really just focused in this little area um that uh hey I think everybody should know about and go check out. Uh, so we will be, like I said, talking to uh, Third Space, uh, which we're uh, uh, really happy to work with them again. Yeah. Hey, and if you want to hear more about Third Space's history, uh, go back and listen to episode 10 uh, because we cover uh, with Andy in depth just sort of how everything got started with them uh, and, and just uh, how they began brewing beer. Yeah. So, hey, and if you'd like, and, and hey, we would really certainly uh, appreciate appreciate it. Uh, leave us some sort of a review, like, subscribe, rate, all that sort of stuff on YouTube, Apple Podcast. Those are the really big ones. Yeah, Apple yeah. Podcast being really large. If you could throw a, a five star and, and leave a little review, um, we Hell, would really be grateful. You know, like look, we always say, we got a couple bad ones. Uh, if you're going to give us a bad one, tell us what we're doing wrong. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's all we're asking here. Like, if you're going to give us a one or two star, whatever, I'm not going to cry. Yeah, I, might, I might shed a couple tears. But uh, we'll we're, keep on moving. We're not everybody's cup of tea, but yeah, yeah. Uh, 
hey, it, it would certainly be awesome if there was some constructive criticism and we could uh, sort of uh, know exactly what's going on and, and how we could maybe uh, make this, you know, a little bit uh, better for everyone. Yeah, around. exactly. So, uh, we would, like I said, I really appreciate the, the review and likes and shares and stuff on social medias. Uh, and, hey, we also have a website with a lot of great information on it. You can find all the episodes. You can find links to the Patreon as well as links to our T Public page which uh, you can buy a bunch of different merch so head over to wisconsindrunkenhistory.com S- sweater weather is coming up sweater you weather six sweaters they have yeah, hoodies hoodies and crew necks whatever you can think of is on there so. yeah so we've got everything for you there uh and and honestly let's just jump right in now to uh the the thick of it the menominee river valley area Russ, give us some history here. So like my co-host said, everyone who's been to Milwaukee has probably been to this area downtown. It stretches from American Family Field and all the way to the Lakeshore at the Harley-Davidson Museum. The patch in question is a four-mile-long section of the city and is host to probably some of the favorite things to do in the Milwaukee area, at least for me. Uh, whether you like the outdoors with the Hank Aaron Trail, watching a Brewers game at the stadium, grabbing probably the world's famous Bloody Marys at Sobelman's, yeah. right? Uh, you know, grabbing beers at City Lights or Third Space, playing slots at Potawatomi Casino, going skating at the Cream City, baby. Absolutely. I've, I've skated there many times. Yeah. The Mitchell Domes, or even maybe you're chopping down at home at a Palermo's Pizza and you can't come to the Arrow. Well, Palermo's is actually from that area. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. So even if you can't get there, grab a Palermo's and chomp that sucker down. You're supporting say, the area, right? You probably have one of these in your freezer right now, waiting to get heated up. 425, 15 minutes. You're good. So we all have some sort of connection to this area. And even some of our guests we've had on this show, including Third Space and Bubbler Bikes, call this area home. This area specifically has gone through a ton of transformation from its origin, and we are happy and excited to be put together this super special episode for you guys. Um, and how it has transformed over the years, and uh, we're going to see right now. So this area was formed by glaciers that melted over 10,000 years ago, and the 1,200 area acre, the 1,200 acre Menominee River Valley was a wild rice marsh and was home to early Native Americans in the area. The name Menominee is going to be found throughout the state in local areas like Menominee Falls, Menominee, you know, you're going to see this. And the word derives from the Algonquin word, uh, Meno, meaning uh, meaning like, um, a f- and, or Meno or Mean, which means a grain or a fruit. Gotcha. So the wild rice is actually called Minomin, and it flourished in the area. And in, in the lower wetland portion of Milwaukee, which is the area we're focusing on today, it actually used to be a wetland, right? And we're going to yeah. go over how it's transformed. So in the, in the 1700s, the Potawatomi were the primary, primary residents of this area. That's the Potawatomi Casino being here, right? Makes yeah. sense, right? But other tribes, including the Ojibwe, Fox, Menominee, Ottawa, Sauk, and the Winnebagos were also living or gathering at resources here at some time in, in the past. A quote from 1830s James Buck best describes the area in its early days. All the marsh proper would be in the, would be in the spring, be literally alive with fish, that came in from the lake and a number of ducks that covered the marsh and it was beyond all computation. And in 1795, Jack's VO, a a fur trader, would establish a permanent trading post in Wisconsin on the bluff region of the valley where the Mitchell Park Domes area is located, the Mitchell Park area. Yeah. And by the middle of the 1800s, the Milwaukee area started to move towards the valley as this area was not yet developed. All of the Milwaukee population filled the marshes with soil, gravel, waste to create the piece of land that could be actually developed on. And they all started to straighten the Menominee River Valley and cut canals that could provide direct shipping routes to the valley area. So this area came, it was a wetland, and they basically dumped everything in here to make it a flat land to be developed on. Yeah. And the area would start to build up, and due to the shipping canals, started to attract industry to the area. And large companies such as Milwaukee Road Shops, which made actually train cars and for the major railroads at the time, and Falk, which is actually the Rexnord company, and yeah. you're probably going to recognize the Rexnord name, right? It's pretty yeah. large. Yeah, they have a lot of different locations now yeah. around the entire city. So, And by the 1900s, it actually became known as the machine shop of the world. They produced many things, including rail cars, like mentioned before, processed wheat for flour, barley for beer, processed hogs and cows for meat, and other products. And also produced the the most famous cream colored brick that we all recognize today from the the limes the bedrock limestone that was yeah. all over our state which is the cream city brick cream city you brick. have some in your house and actually we looked yeah. at it when i went to the bathroom today so yep it was great for the economy and jobs but also posed some negative challenges to the area for, for the resources and the wildlife aspect like all things right development hinders nature yeah 
So due to this area's abundance of jobs, attracted many people to the area and helped develop some of the first major neighborhoods in the area, such as Pigsville, Merrill Park, which you might recognize, yep. and Concordia. There were so many people who worked there, including 3,000 alone in the Milwaukee Road shop. And due to everyone heading into work at the same time carrying a silver tin lunchbox, these folks actually became known as the Bucket Brigade. Hey, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And the neighborhood southwest of the area called Silver City actually owes its name to the Milwaukee Road Shop as they paid workers in silver dollars. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that cool? That is really neat. Like many things in the 1960s, racial segregation was abundant in all cities, as blacks and white neighborhoods did not actually intermingle. The valley became known as Milwaukee's Mason-Dixon line, separating out the two neighborhoods. Like we mentioned like we mentioned about, Merrill Park was high in the Irish population due to all the fires that occurred, pushing the Irish out into this neighborhood. And the Catholic Church was a prevalent force in the area, and one such Catholic priest named Father James Gropey. And Gropey, we're going to have to do a, like a separate episode on him. He's a pretty famous character yeah, in Wisconsin. Yeah, a lot more information to, yeah, to yeah. go Yeah, yeah. But he on. led the first open house marches across the valley in protest of this inequality, racial discrimination, and housing segregation across that used to be called the 16th Street Viaduct, but in 1988 would later officially be named the James E. Gropey Unity Bridge, which is pretty cool. I don't know if I really agree with the last name Gropey as a priest, but well, we're mean, just throwing it, it out maybe there, it's, right? Is it Gropey or Gropey? I, I think it's Gropey when yeah. I looked it up. When I actually looked it up, it's... I'll I, have to dive in a little bit more because yeah. when you read, and this is true with a lot of books, as you go on, uh, you pronounce and, and learn a character as one thing. And then all of a sudden you go and you watch like the movie adaptation yeah. and they're calling him something completely different. And you're like, ah, oh, hell. But I just thought it was kind of ironic. Yeah. Honestly. But I did look it up and actually it was pronounced Gropey. And I don't know if that's actually correct. When you put it into like a translator, it comes yeah. back as a German last name, Gropey, or, a, or Irish even is Gropey as well. Yeah. So, and I don't know his, his ethnic heritage, but I'm guessing it's Gropey. Very good. And during the 1900s, as things changed and needs changed, many of these jobs became obsolete along with much of the outdated equipment, leaving much of the area in manufacturing to be abandoned and vacant. And this area actually became quite an eyesore as things deteriorated further. Due to such large changes in industry moving from the area, the neighbor also started to feel the impact. Obviously, there's no money coming yeah. in there, so you can't fix houses up. They're going to get run down, dumpy. You can see in a lot of places around here, like when GM left. I mean, now Janesville's up and coming, but it did deteriorate for, after. Exactly. I was just going to say, even for like the next decade after uh, uh, GM closed down, what, in 2007? Yeah. It had, it it, had it really a took a toll on that entire uh, neighborhood and that entire city. And that's exactly what you're saying was experienced yeah, right here in the Menominee River Valley. Exactly. And the decline of the area was also declined for people as poor air quality, barely any close jobs. They had to travel to do anything recreational, obesity and asthma due to all the pollution in the area. I've got both of those things. You got it all. Yeah. You hit it all. It's from the Menominee River Valley. Yeah. That's what causes all I'm that. obese. I have asthma. Holy smokes. I smell. MRV, what did you do to Eric? <laughs> Jeez Louise. This became just a place to pass over to get somewhere else and was actually not a place to stop. And I actually remember as a kid, probably in the early 90s, um, traveling around there, and it was a dump. I mean, it was it like, it was like I mean, there was, it was like crumbled buildings, like, right. you know, rubble. It just looked like a dump. It just wasn't much to look at. Exactly. And yet, thus leading us to today, where in 1998, the city of Milwaukee started the Menominee River, the Menominee River Valley Business Association and the Menominee Metropolitan Sewage District, where they laid out a roadmap to get this place booming again. And the groundworks for the Hank, Hank Aaron State Trail, Hank Aaron, which is awesome, Mo I, Milwaukee I love, Braves. I love everything that, that we we celebrate about Hank Aaron. It's he's just awesome. absolutely Heck amazing. Yeah. Amazing a story in, in, in himself. It, amazing. So the Hank Aaron Trail and revitalizing the neighborhood were in motion to turn this eyesore into something to be proud of. And since 1999, more than 50 companies now call this space home. 5,200 jobs have been created for the city of Milwaukee, 45 acres of native plant species, 7 miles of trails laid, and nationally recognized shared stormwater system has been established. It was, all, it was recognized by the Sierra Club as one of the best, 10 best developments in the nation, which is pretty impressive for Milwaukee. That is amazing, yeah. And today, the area is thriving and continues to update the area and continues to make improvements. And uh, I know me, it, it, it's you know, Milwaukee used to be a very segregated city, but it's really cool seeing like a lot of these people coming together now in these neighborhoods. I mean, and it's it really, still it's changed is. It's a lot. Definitely it, one of there's the definitely most, some segregated areas. I'm not going to lie. It's but definitely it's, one of the most segregated cities in, in the entire United States. But it's, it's nice to see the change from then, right? I mean, it was even worse. Yeah. I mean, it, it you know, we, we still have South Milwaukee where it's, it's 
it's primarily Hispanic. And then you yeah. got like, obviously white folks bay, you know, the white people. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's but it's cool it's, to seeing the city coming back to the, the well, you know. It's nice to know that, that at least there are uh, organizations that, that focus on, uh, on making it better. Right. And and that's all we can really say as far as, uh, uh as far as that goes, uh, as long as as long as we have these individuals and and the voice and uh, the dedicated manpower to to do that, hopefully we can continue to see yeah that improvement. But really, you know, you see a, a, an area like the Menominee River Valley that, you know, like we said after sort of that manufacturing boom, uh, ha- had kind of busted you were left with just this area that you, you know was largely untouched for so many years and then to see that 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 support uh, and drive to change that was awesome in 1998 and now you know being a, a, an adult in this area uh going down there is amazing i uh, my wife and i were actually just down at twisted fisherman uh just maybe 2 weeks ago uh, we really enjoy uh, that that restaurant and being right down there on that waterfront. We really enjoy going to uh, uh, Brewers games, obviously. Oh, yeah, I'm saying We here. love going to – I've been to the Harley-Davidson Museum probably more times than you should <laughs> as a resident I, of I the city. I saw Elton John down there. Yeah. That was awesome. Just I mean, a guy like, named Elton John? Just Elton John. It wasn't he was, actually Elton John. He was John. a hobo with a with yeah. the, with the He terrible. had an Elton John shirt on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that girl that we had in uh, high school one time. She wore a Cher shirt, and we called her Cher. Do you believe in life after love? Is that Remember? Cher? <laughs> yeah, holy Is smokes. Is she here? She's here right now in oh our studio. God. Cher, how but are yeah. you? Uh, honestly, there's so many really cool things to do, Yeah, I, and, and you and I have gone to... Uh, the different breweries. There's Third Space, which uh, we're going to talk lights. a lot more about. I mean, City Lights. I mean, I've been down there quite a bit. You know, even canoeing the canals. Yeah. Even, you know, hiking the Hank Aaron Trail. I've, well, I've definitely walked the Hank Aaron Trail. There's like Milwaukee canoe or kayak rentals that's down there that, yeah. that they, you know, they really um, um, approach it in a really cool way that that's a really great way of travel when you're right there on the water. And so many of these businesses have the ability to just row right up, get out, you could tie up your kayak or canoe and then uh, visit Twisted Fisherman. There's a yeah. few other restaurants that have that same kind of uh, um, uh, ability. It, yeah, it's a right. it's a feature. In, in, you got a in, dock in, hanging right outside and just hook and up. And then, of course, Potawatomi. Uh, who doesn't like to go and gamble every once in a while? Um, it, it, it's, it's a fun time in itself as long as you don't get yeah. too carried away and lose, you know, like your paycheck. And, and I get to see Cheap Trick. Your, at Potawatomi, which sure. is awesome. Yeah. And Foreigner was there not too long ago, which is just cool. Like all the band. greats. Like, yeah, all the greats have been there. <laughs> so, uh, but hey, you know, really what, what we really want to uh, talk about today as well is Valley Week. The fact yes. that oh, yeah. from September 25th all the way to October 2nd, there is going to be, I think, 16 individual events that uh, are, are really there to celebrate uh, the revitalization yeah. of this area, uh, including, you know, the uh, the the anniversary party for third space, which is on September 25th. A big bash is going to kick this thing off. Oh, yeah. uh, there's going to be, I think, three bands playing. There is going to be uh, special releases for beers that we're going to talk to Andy about, about here. Uh, it's absolutely an incredible event. So if you have time to make it out, it's going to be awesome. Uh, and, and Hey, it's all that, um, uh, renewable energy, the, the, the resourcefulness of these events where it's zero waste is freaking awesome. Yeah. I, I was, uh, uh, involved in, uh, rock the green back in 2012. I think that was like its second year or third year at the time. And just being able to see an, an entire concert event put on without any waste is, f- I mean, it's, it's so fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, uh it, it's such a, a creative thing that I wish most, uh, of these events that we have could go that route. Uh, you see the pedal power, uh, uh bikes yeah. that are powering one stage. entire stage. Heck That's yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Russ and I, I think they're going to reserve some bike space for us. I think us. we and might think be charging the stage up. You might see us out there. I'm going to get sweaty. Holy smokes. I'm going to have beer in my system. 
It's going to be cool. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. And, you know, it's just so great to see the transformation within my life. Yeah. Right. I mean, this area was a complete dump. And mm-hmm. I'm not even saying that to be mean. It was it was trashed. I mean, I mean, we used to go to uh, games at County Stadium, and from County Stadium, you saw that whole area. I mean, the the parking lot of County Stadium. Um, it, I mean, it was your neighbors with all of these different huge manufacturing buildings, and at the time, a lot of them were just abandoned and and uh, just sat uh, completely empty uh, with nothing going on. Obviously, the recycling thing is down there that yeah. um, is uh, is still working and fully you know fully in use. But uh, so many of these different businesses were empty at the time, and now it's a booming area people, again. People are you moving go, into these businesses too. Like Third Space ended right. up revitalizing a building, which is awesome. And if you tune C- in, we're going lights as well. If you get a chance, we're uh, going to put out a promo where you can actually see behind the scenes of Third Space. So our international listeners, if you want to actually see this brewery, we're going to be filming yeah. something. So be sure to tune in. Yeah, and uh, I mean, anytime you drive down Canal Street, you'll see exactly what we're talking about in terms of uh, the the you know just the revived look of everything. These businesses are huge. Uh, the buildings have all been sort of touched up and, and like Russ said, even some of them repurposed yeah. to do things that they weren't initially uh, set up for. So, Yeah, but no, it's incredible. And that's going to conclude our main segment for today. And now on to the special. All right. So we are uh, joined today by Michelle from uh, M- Menominee Valley Partners. Uh, how are you doing today, Michelle? Great. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Yeah, yeah we're excited to have you. Yeah, it's it's absolutely uh, uh, amazing uh, what you guys have going on right now, uh, and uh, and kind of the things uh, going on uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, near future here. But why don't we? I mean, just give us a little uh, rundown of what the valley really is. I don't know for anybody that maybe you know isn't from the Milwaukee area, uh, just kind of a rundown of exactly where the valley is and what it kind of includes. Yeah, sure. So Milwaukee's Menominee River Valley, it's really in the heart of the city. Um, It's on Canal Street and it stretches from the Harley Davidson Museum, past Potawatomi Hotel and Casino, down to American Family Field. So it's about four miles long and about half mile wide. Anytime you go over the valley or over Milwaukee's viaducts, the valley is what you're finding underneath those. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, I mean, so it's been obviously uh, being restored and kind of, you know, revamped over, you know, the last at least decade in my, from what I, you know, have kind of seen and and from my time here in in the city, uh, what is, what are some other things that the Valley includes uh, and and, and how has it changed, I guess, uh, in in just that uh, short amount of time? Yeah. So I, you know, in that time, so it's really the Valley's revitalization really started ticking up in the late 1990s um, when the city of Milwaukee really started doubling down efforts to redevelop the land and and really maximize the Valley's benefit for the city and for the residents here. There were a lot of ideas of what the Valley could become. There was the idea to put a prison down there, um, to put a whole retail district for, you know, the Brewers Stadium. And, And residents really said, well, that's really great, but you know, we need good jobs because those all left when all the manufacturing companies left, you know, decades ago and the neighborhoods were still struggling. So the city said, okay, like our goals then are we're going to restore the nature because people need, you know, places. We need green. We need more green spaces in the city. We need um, safe places for kids to play. Let's attract companies and family sustaining jobs. And let's really build out those recreational amenities. So they did that. And more than 300 acres of brownfields were redeveloped. Um, Brownfield is kind of, you know, Opposite of a green field, this lush green field, a brown field is kind of what's left after yeah. <laughs> all the industry leaves. Um, so there were 60 acres of park space developed, which is, that's the equivalent of 45 football fields. So that's like a, a pretty sizable you know, amount, of, amount of park space yeah. now in the heart of the city. It's just like this land that, that was just sitting there not doing anything. So there's Three Bridges Park, which is a fabulous park, amazing views, Um these beautiful rolling hills in the city, all native plants and grasses. Uh, the Hank Aaron State Trail runs all the way through the valley. Yeah. And, of course, the Menominee River, which has been used for so many different things throughout history, um, from the shipping industry. And now it's really becoming this kind of cool recreational hotspot where people can see, you know, what Milwaukee used to be. Um, 
because a lot of the valley shores have not been redeveloped yet. Yeah. Yeah, I know for me, like even I think it was the early 90s. I remember my mom taking me around the city and you could always see it was kind of like an eyesore. And it's just incredible to see what it's become today. It's amazing. It's so green. And there are so many people like on bikes and skateboards. And there are kids that come together from the north and south side and play soccer in the Menominee Valley Community Park, which is that big park space underneath the uh, 35th Street Viaduct. Yeah. yeah. And, and we were going to ask you, too. So we, we were doing this episode today on the uh, the Valley Week itself. Can you explain Valley Week and uh, where we can go to and how we can help participate in the event? Yeah. So so Valley Week started five years ago um, in 2017. And it was after, you know, we kept hearing people come down to the valley and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I didn't know this was here. <laughs> we're like, well, we need to do we need to have our own kind of week a festival to really invite people to come down here and experience this kind of new nature and these cool destinations and, and all this really fascinating history that's really intertwined with the history of Milwaukee and Wisconsin. So um, Valley Week this year is from September 25th to October 2nd. It is our favorite week of the year. Um, we have a hard time even limiting our events. So we have 16 events in one week. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully, yeah, hopefully there's at least one thing that somebody, you know, that everybody could really think, oh, that's really interesting for me. So, you know, I think for like history buffs uh, or maybe trivia buffs, we have um, a digital scavenger hunt coming up. And the kickoff of Valley Week is going to be a blast down on St. Paul Avenue. So that is where the original Sobelman's is. That's kind of our, our landmark for St. Paul Avenue. And, and now the design district is really growing on that street. But uh, Valley Beak is kicking off with a fire truck pull underneath the 16th Street Viaduct. Um, and then, of course, we're celebrating our breweries and our trails with the ultimate beer run. It's awesome. probably the world's only 3.7K. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's awesome. So people will, uh, we actually have half the people start at one brewery, half the people start at the other. Yeah. They make their way to the opposite brewery for their, their midpoint refresher. <laughs> right. Then they head back to their, their starting brewery for their finisher beer. You need a, you need those carbs to keep on moving. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. It, yeah. It's, it's a blast. And that will actually end at third space brewing's fifth anniversary party um, and rock the green event. Awesome. I mean, that, um, I mean, it just all sounds so uh, I mean, just so cool and, 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 and it couldn't be in a better area of the city and, and draw uh, a lot of attention and, and much needed focus towards uh, an area that, like you said, still sort of feels maybe a little under uh, underappreciated. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I guess like to this kind of underappreciation, I, I want to get my kind of personal goal is I want to get as many people on the Menominee River as possible. I, it is my favorite place to be in the city of Milwaukee. Um, because it is still, you can really see the past reflected there. Um, and I want people to see it now because then hopefully in 15 years, they're going to say, oh, I remember when there was nothing on these shores. And yeah. now there's this really cool river walk and, you know, all these cool companies. So we have um, a couple of events that really focus on the river too. We have a kayak tour and a happy hour cruise, which, you know, these are probably the last times you're going to get on the river. Because we're getting, you know, late into the fall season. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And so talking about uh, Solomon's, uh, have you had the uh, Bloody Mary that comes with a cheeseburger and a uh, full chicken? You know, <laughs> I have not had the full chicken one yet because okay. I, I can't find enough people that like a Bloody Mary. But have yeah. you been there? To, have you seen their new Bloody Mary sculpture out there? The Bruce City Bloody? Did, yeah. I have not. I might have to check that yeah. out. It's yeah, awesome. it's very cool. It's they very partnered cool. with um, Milwaukee Blacksmith and put together this giant, I think it's like a 400 pound Bloody Mary yeah. outside <laughs> sculpture. I can't I wait to it. see that. I believe it. As a Wisconsinite, the Bloody Mary is a staple. So it's like Absolutely. a Sunday morning starter. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, this Absolutely. is awesome. I, 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 honestly, Michelle, we will we will be there, uh, and we will be hanging out with Lindsay and uh, and everybody over at Third Space. Uh, so, uh, hey, we'll we'll meet you there, and we will enjoy some. Uh, maybe maybe have a beer. Um, I, I know you and I are definitely going to oh, have one. Russ. You bet. Let's so. do it and make our way down the street for a Bloody Mary afterwards. Exactly. Or before. <laughs> exactly. There maybe will... get our picture in front of uh, the the Sobelman's uh, sculpture. You bet. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag be the garnish. There you oh, go. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, and we really appreciate your time. And like I said, uh, we will definitely be down there. And, uh, hey, we invite all the listeners to show up as well. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, we're here with Derek Pritzel from Derek Pritzel and the Gamble. How are you doing, Derek? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yourself? Not too bad. Yeah, it's a doing nice, well. nice Sunday here. Got a oh, couple booze in hand. It's mm-hmm. hot. It's <laughs> Um, so we yeah, wanted it's super hot. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we wanted to know a little bit about how you kind of got started into music, and uh, we love the stuff you're putting out. We just were wondering a little bit of backstory of how you got started. Yeah, um, I don't know. Kind of typical thing. Cousin had a guitar, and then we started playing. Nice. And then uh, I uh, are you guys familiar with Todd Snyder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an artist, right? Yep. I got so I got just ended up seeing him randomly in Green Bay when I was living up there, and then got really into songwriting. Yeah, so my whole like jam is John Prine and Todd Snyder. Absolutely, trying to do that type of sh- that show. Just I don't know. I, that's just I love it, and yeah. so that's kind of what got me into it. And then the band now, I uh, moved back from living all over, and. uh about seven years ago, seven years ago, back to Milwaukee, and started to playing with the guys that are in the band now, and um, yeah, it's just become a fun thing, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, I mean, no, nothing better than being able to sort of uh, uh, mesh and jive with uh, with other musicians. I I, I commonly uh, will talk about that moment when you're just in a jam session everybody's got their instruments nobody really knows what's happening but you're all just playing something and then that moment where you, you something like you you hit on something cool and then there's like yeah, this you shiver a smile across the yes. dance yeah. <laughs> cuz you can't help but smile it's it's something that you know I, I don't know that everybody can necessarily experience because you know, there's a bunch of people who just aren't musically uh, driven and, you know, that they they have probably that moment in something else. But like uh, Russ and okay. I, we can definitely, you know, feel, you know, on that same level as musicians that uh, it's so cool to just oh, put yeah. something together like that. Yeah, it is. Uh, me and my guitar player uh, have a pretty good relationship because we listen like that. on. So he'll like throw in little weird licks and like the end of some guitar lick we've been listening to to try to make me laugh like during the show yeah so it's, it's fun that's yeah. awesome yeah so so, yeah. The, so the song we're featuring today is uh, a seppi uh can you give us a little backstory about that song specifically where it was recorded and uh, maybe a little story about how you wrote the song okay well the song came together um i was uh uh work trades a lot and uh still do but i was traveling around hanging up conveyor systems and we were for uh, like george pacific so we we're doing paper mills yeah so we we're down in the middle of nowhere in mississippi doing this thing and uh i don't know i just met a guy at a bar and that's kind of what the song is just a story of uh walking into a random bar and then a song being on the radio and then everyone buying shots and drinking at the end awesome you know? That's, that's the, so that's that's the ending I want. Story, the song. <laughs> awesome. That? That's the ending everybody wants. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out, doing shots, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I had all these songs, and that's kind of why the band's called The Gamble, is because, uh, you know, for a long time there was rotating cast members and this, that, and um, then when we got locked in, then we just, like, start playing with the guys like the, the gamble guys like the, been the four same guys for a while and uh it just becomes what it's going to be yeah so that's how like the music part of it came together and then uh i don't know we just recorded this one up in uh uh in uh, minnesota okay with a guy named eric toskinen you guys familiar with him yeah oh yeah yep. no way yeah dude right <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome yeah yeah so we went and worked with him and he's uh become a good phone conversation you know walking around the neighborhood talk for like an hour about stuff and uh yeah so that's where we made that album and that should be coming out hopefully i don't know next couple months yeah definitely definitely and so before we find out a little bit when you're going to be playing and a little bit about Valley Week, I had a question. So we have a lot of listeners in central Wisconsin, kind of in the Wisconsin Rapids, uh, Friendship Adams area. And there's a famous, yeah. there's a famous gas station up there called Pritzel's. 
And we were wondering if you were related to those guys. No, uh, uh, no, I'm not. You're not. Okay. Uh, just, I'm from, I grew up in town called Balder, so like Manitowoc area. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's my hometown. And then, so there's a lot of other Pritzels, but like my family tree, like my branch of the Pritzel thing is very short. <laughs> there's one side that's real big. And, uh, you know, that's a couple generations ago when we parted ways, I guess. Yeah, wow. and everyone up in that area will know Pritzels. It's on Highway 13. <clears throat> it's like the main mecca center for that area, right? Yeah. It's like a gas station all-inclusive. Nice. So we were just wondering. It's like the famous uh, Central Wisconsin Station department store. So we just wanted to ask. So <laughs> That's awesome. I haven't seen that. Yeah, you should definitely take a picture like underneath the big Pritzel sign. I, and I actually have a Pritzels T-shirt yeah. at home. Jeez, I know. <laughs> You're a big fan. Of I, Pritzel. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big Wisconsin guy, so I like to support little places yeah. like that. But that place is just super cool. So, yeah. So is it like uh, the pine cone? You know, when you're driving to Madison, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's like a like. It's like touristy, but they also have like everything in that store you can think of to survive up north, right? Or wow. in central Wisconsin. It's a pretty cool store. But wow. I just thought I just yeah, had to ask because I'm going to have to hook you up with a t-shirt next time we, we meet. Yeah. Because I got a sweet Pritzel yeah. shirt. You got to rock. Yeah, I, I'll rock my name. All right. <laughs> and then, so we, we before we let you go today, we want to ask about Valley Week, um, when you're going to play and how you kind of got involved in Valley Week. Um. Uh. Uh, just uh, contact through Lindsay, uh, who puts it on and stuff, and yeah, um, it kind of came together pretty quick. Um, yeah, so honestly, I'm not, I don't know <laughs> a ton about it right now, but yeah. I feel like redoing Menominee Valley, like as a thing or a yeah, j- just like, like a historic thing or what? Yeah, it's just it's kind of just to celebrate the the revitalization that's kind of been happening for like the past couple decades, uh, late '90s, uh, to try to uh, give that area uh, a little bit of a facelift because it is such a cool area um, and, and such a nice part of of downtown, and you kind of see that first. And uh, yeah, ever since the kind of manufacturing kind of went away from that area of Milwaukee. Uh, it was kind of just left as a, uh, you know, an old dump of, of just, you know, like brown land. And then, you know, Hey, I mean, why, why let that sit there and go to waste? You know, why not put something that, uh, we as, you know, Milwaukee area individuals can use, you know, and, and utilize that land. So they've, I mean, the parks that they have down there, as well as all the restaurants and, and, uh, um, uh, the, 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 obviously, is that, is the skate park down there. Yeah, it is actually Cream City's down there. Cream City's down there. I yeah. skate there often. Heck yeah. 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 Is it? And then like across the street, there's like an architectural firm's building, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah, that place looks awesome inside too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's that, a neat area. There's just so many cool, you know, little spots that, you know, I, I mean, we we talk about Sobelmans, how that's kind of like a little bit of a jumping oh, yeah. off point to the whole area, but it really sp- like spans all the way from. Uh, uh, the Brewers uh, uh, American Family Field all the way down to uh, the Harley Davidson Museum and everything in between is, is yeah. considered that, you know. So, yeah, I got the soccer field. And and you'll be on uh, uh, on September 25th, you'll be playing a show. And, and I, w- what time is, uh, I think it's 8 o'clock, are you guys playing? Yeah, we're going on late. We're doing the 8 o'clock set. Yeah, and then. So it should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be fun. We can't wait to see. We're heading down there. Yeah, yeah so. it's going to be a blast. It's going to be a blast. It's, it's uh, cool to put the type of music we're doing out and playing because a lot of it's like blues based, like super blues based. Yeah. And uh, it's um, like where I'm from, like it, that's all that was in bars is blues bands and shit like that. Yeah. And to do it really well, the different things. So it's, I'm excited to be bringing a little different flavor of something. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily the the type of music that that you hear uh, at, at a lot of these events, unless you're seeking out like a blues festival or something. But uh, yeah, exactly. It's just absolutely phenomenal stuff, and uh, and uh, we we honestly we love hearing about the little insides uh, that that happen with these uh, with the songs that you've written over the past you know few years and uh, seeing them kind of come together, and now you get to play them live, and we couldn't be any more excited to. Uh, to you know, come out and, and join you on the twenty fifth, and and we really look forward to that. 
yeah, no, I think it's going to be a blast. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. All right, awesome. Derek, thank you so much for, for taking the time out and, and talking with us today. Uh, again, as we mentioned, uh, they'll be on uh, September 25th, 8 o'clock. That's down by Third Space. Uh, hey, really appreciate your time, and we will talk soon. Yeah, we will. Look forward to meeting you guys. All right, thanks a lot, Derek. Right, bye, Have Derek. a good one. Yep, later. All right, bye.
right, today we're here with Andy from Third Space. You may recognize him from episode 10 if you want to go back and learn more about the brewery. Andy, how are you doing today? Doing great, guys. Good to be with you. Now, you were just at IPA Fest, right, yesterday? That's right. That's uh, We have two huge events we do every year. Uh, one of them is what we're talking about today, and the other one is Wisconsin IPA Fest, which was just yesterday. So I don't have much of a voice left, <laughs> but I'll, I'll do my best to chat with you I th- guys. I think our uh, listeners are used to that. We were, uh, we had a horse voice from yeah. the uh, Bucks game. Right. <laughs> so they understand uh, nice. completely. Yeah. So. So, so we mentioned Wisconsin IPA Fest just concluded, uh, and so what is the event that we've got coming up uh, uh, within the next couple weeks here? It's a big one. It's our fifth anniversary party, so we are extremely excited. It's going to be just a huge party at Third Space to celebrate five years in business. Uh, it is part of uh, what we call Valley Week, which is a series of events happening throughout the Menominee River Valley. And it's just going to be an awesome event. Live music, great beer, and we we always pick a nonprofit partner to support. And this year, we're working with Rock the Green to really um, highlight sustainability efforts in the city of Milwaukee. Absolutely, and and five years is, uh, uh, I mean, that's a long time when you're thinking about you know the the business end of stuff. Uh, but you have probably been making you know beer for even longer than that, and yeah. and it's always delicious product too. So. Um, it, I mean, what what kind of uh, stuff can we look forward to uh, at the anniversary get together? So we've got just a ton of things happening, but the real highlights are some live music. Uh, we don't do a ton of live music at Third Space, so we really blow it out when it comes to our anniversary parties. So we've got some great bands coming. Uh, and then the other part is the beer, right? You can't have a, a, an anniversary <laughs> party at a brewery without some really special beer releases. And this year we're releasing two uh, anniversary specific beers. One of them is really special. It is a brand new um, tradition that we're starting at Third Space. Uh, The beer is called Five, uh, you know, fittingly for the fifth anniversary. Uh, Next year there will be a six and and, and so on. Awesome. But it's it's a special barrel-aged beer that uh, we call it uh, the Solera. And it it basically ages in three different types of spirit barrels over time. And every year, we're going to move the beer from one spirit barrel to another, leaving some of the previous year's beer behind. Oh, wow. So it builds upon itself year after year, adding, you know, age and complexity to the next year's blend. Holy smokes. It's like Inception. Like, yeah, exactly. The beer in it's the cool. beer. Where and it at? ages. It's fun because it aged. It aged in a bourbon barrel for a while, and then we moved it into a, uh, brandy barrels, which adds some really interesting character and very Wisconsin, right? Yeah. Um, and then we move it into PX sherry barrels. Ooh. So this beer is going to be really good. It's really special for the fifth anniversary. And then next year we will brew uh, a similar batch that's going to top up the barrels from this year and so on every year. So, you know, 10 years from now, you'll be drinking, you know, the the 15. And uh, <laughs> that's going to have some of the beer from this year's uh, batch. Awesome. And, that yeah. is a really cool idea. I, I really... You know, I think that 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 is a, a what what better way than to, uh, th- to celebrate the anniversary each you know each and every year, but with this really special thing that carries exactly. on from year. So that's awesome. It's fun, and then people can collect the bottles over time, yeah. right? And then you can even sit down with your friends and do a tasting of you know five years worth of this, and and notice how it changes over time. Yeah, so that's gonna be really fun. And then we have a second big beer release, which we're uh, we're creating with uh, Rock the Green, who's our nonprofit partner for the event, and that's called Rock the Green IPA. Um, you know, we're we're known for our IPAs over at Third Space, so yeah. we we had to make an IPA too, uh, and that one's gonna be really good. But what's exciting about that beer is twenty five percent of all sales of that beer will be donated back to Rock the Green and their sustainability efforts. So that's a really great way for people to support the cause is and and to drink a good beer. Absolutely, and and yeah, I mean, Rock the Green has been uh, around for quite some time. I mean, all basically all the years that I've lived in the Milwaukee area, I've always had some sort of 
uh, uh, you know, involvement around Rock the Green, whether that's just going to concerts or, you know, kind of seeing them around and, and the sustainability efforts and stuff. So, I mean, this is great. I, I love the partnership. I think it's amazing. And uh, I can't wait to be out there. I think we're coming out on, on the 25th, oh, yeah. September two, 25th. These two hombres will be drinking the yeah. Cinco, the number five. Yeah, we're going to enjoy some five. So. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's going to be a great day. Um, and, and starting in the next couple of weeks here, we're going to be launching some fun uh, ticket packages that people can purchase that they want an enhanced experience at the event. Um, but the event itself is free. You know, anybody can come and hang out, listen to the music, uh, have a couple beers. There's going to be nonprofits on site, you know, doing sustainability education, which will really be cool. So there's a message to the event. But then you can you can buy bottles of this Solera beer. You can buy six packs of the Rock the Green IPA. And then we're also going to have some like VIP packages. So you get a, like a better view of the stage and you get a special commemorative anniversary glass. And then a portion of your ticket is going to go back to Rock the Green as well. So people awesome. should keep an eye out for that, um, you know, being announced on our, our social media pages. But it's a way to just um, enhance the experience of the event. But it, but it is a totally free event. And it's a zero waste event, awesome. which is really cool. And we've never done anything like that before. So we're really excited to to do that so that we can put on this big event, but make sure it doesn't have uh, an impact on the a negative impact on the environment. Awesome. I, and, and we can certainly appreciate that. That's uh, uh, an amazing, uh, an amazing feat and, and something that uh, we hope, you know, more, uh, more live events kind of turn to. So Andy, I really appreciate your time. Uh, this was and, awesome. and we really do look forward to seeing you out there and we hope that all the listeners can stop out as well. And uh, like Andy said, keep an eye on their social medias for these uh, ticket packages and, and more uh, announcements. Yeah. And we'll be down there later today, filming some promos for this yeah. episode coming up. So we can't wait to get down there and see third space again. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited to have you guys. Hopefully uh, we cleaned up well enough from IPA fest yesterday, <laughs> and, uh, but we are open again today. Um, and so maybe you guys can have a beer while you're hanging out. Yeah, absolutely. And we... hopefully I cleaned up enough too. I'm looking yeah. pretty rugged this morning. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Thank you so much. Great to chat with you guys, and we'll see you on September 25th. See you there. All right. Thanks, Andy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So our next musical guest, which will be at Third Space on September 25th, is De La Buena. Yeah. So De La Buena, meaning of the good, obviously. Pretty simple if you're a Spaniard like me. I didn't know <laughs> so that. I, I'm yeah. not a Spaniard, but I speak Spanish very well. You go there a lot. Yeah, um, and uh, the song we're featuring today is uh, Pelotas uh, Blue, which means uh, blue pellets. Pelotas Blue, yeah. <laughs> nice. I like your Spanish. Did uh, you get me? Yeah, this isn't too bad. Yeah. Good accent there. But uh, yeah, so uh, really great influences here. No, it's Obviously, great. The, the music is just... Uh, um, percussive. It's percussive. It, it a shakes. lot of that Latin dance. Yes, you know? exactly. So uh, it, it has that whole feel to it, and and it's absolutely phenomenal. And I can't wait. I know September twenty fifth. You and I are both going to be down there, um, and this will be just after I get back from seeing the Grateful Dead, or or well, uh, Dead and Company. So uh, the the surviving members of. Uh, the Grateful Dead. This is going to be a, a musical experience for both Russ and I. I don't think either one of us have seen uh, De La Buena live. I have not. So this will be absolutely amazing. And we encourage everybody else to come out here as well. So, uh, you know, the party starts probably somewhere around like, you know, one or two. The music will start somewhere in that area as well. Uh, I know V funk is kind of kicking things off right around like the three o'clock, three 30, uh, time zone. And then, uh, you know, De La Buena, it will be kind of uh, in the middle there. And then Derek Pritzel is kind of finishing things off. So really awesome. We're going to go ahead and play, uh, like I said, De La Buena. Pelatas Blue in, uh, uh, Tienamos, uh, Pelatas Blue.
All right. So I am here today with Dave from De La Buena. How you doing, Dave? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? It's good to be here. <laughs> Hey, I, I cannot thank you enough for, for taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, to join me here. And uh, uh, I know Russ isn't uh, actually with me right now in the studio, but he is here in spirit. And uh, we will kind of, uh, you know, we'll, we'll miss him. But at the same time, we know that he's uh, he's right here with us. So um, honestly, you know, uh, the first thing I wanted to ask, uh, you know, after listening to a lot of your music, um, just sort of when you got started, because you're... I mean, you, you, you sound so, so good. And, uh, uh, I've been playing for quite some time and I, and I don't sound any better yet. So, uh, <laughs> how, how did you get started? When did you get started and, and, uh, sure. take it from there? Okay. Eric. Yeah. Thanks man. Well, so yeah, I mean, this is, it's kind of a long story. I mean, <clears throat> real quickly, like I have been playing music since I was a kid. My father was a musician so I come from a real musical family um, that kind of we are always, you know, playing piano, guitar, singing together, stuff like that. So um, and, and also <clears throat> my dad <clears throat> and, and my mother is a big music lover as well. And um, my dad is no longer with us, but, um, you know, really imparted upon I have one sister who's very musical, imparted upon us this, you know, real love. And uh, he had a big record collection that was very eclectic as well. Um, that we, you know, we'd listen to from, you know, Beatles and Sly and the Family Stones, huge Stevie Wonder fan, um, you know, Chicago, Billy Joel, wow. jazz, Oscar Peterson. I mean, you name it all across the board. That's awesome. Um, and um, yeah, so, uh, so, you know, when I was young, I, you know, I learned to play guitar and piano and stuff like that. And then as, as I got older um i was also a big soccer player which i still do play soccer and have a great love for for that sport uh of football uh, as it's known in most yeah. of the world yep um and um so when i was 16 i guess a real formative experience for me uh, about moving into more of like a, as a life of, of a serious musician when i was 16 i broke my leg playing soccer in the oh, middle wow. of the summer so i kind of one of my favorite pastimes and any activity as a 16 year old for the, the entire summer was, was just kind of cut. And I was sitting in a full leg cast and my folks said, Hey, you know, once you, once you get deeper into either guitar or piano and they knew this really great piano teacher by the name of Dan Albertson, he's a local guy. I think he's based in Waukesha. Um, and I said, yeah, okay, I'll do guitar. I mean, I'll do piano. And so um, Dan started really showing me into like the boogie woogie blues and jazz worlds okay. and also kind of bringing, I don't, I mean like pop music in a very broad sense of the word into it where it was like, the, I, I think that the a big, big formative moment for any young musicians that kind of like as children study and then move on to having their own musical taste, whatever they may be, is kind of connecting the two, connecting that sort of academic world of music lessons when you're a kid to a practical application of learning to play music that you enjoy. Yeah. And so that was kind of like, that was like that, that was that light bulb moment for me is because not only did Dan start showing me into these, these like jazz zones. Like I remember one of the really early jazz standards I learned, like was days of wine and roses, you know, really, really heavy standards and like kind of, you know, Broadway type music, you know, yeah, and going way back to like old Cole Porter stuff, things like that. And then kind of bring it into sort of pop music so that I could connect the dots on music that I enjoyed. So as I started moving through my, you know, later teens, I was really getting into the jazz side of things. I was never a huge classical player, but the jazz side of things gave me kind of the harmonic the harmonic um, ability to really, and it just was like a, a huge opening, you know, of, of eyes just because there's such a, a different harmonic world that, that opens. And then as my taste started to grow, I could apply that into music that I dug. And then, so I really started getting heavy into reggae music and, um, I, and just like, like Ethiopian music and Puerto Rican, uh, like salsa, Cuban stuff and, and soul and all these different musics and, um, and like funk, the meters. And, and so by the time I got into my early twenties, I was like really, really into that stuff. And I, and I was, and I was eating up music, you know, just like listening, you know, as, as whatever I could find from as many eclectic, you know, backgrounds as I could from black Sabbath to Mulatto Estetke to, 
you know, like I said, the meters to, you know, burning spear to all this reggae stuff. And, um, and so by the time I, I got to my mid to late twenties, I had been touring with this organ trio called, um, Recycled Future, which was a local organ trio that we, we toured in Europe a couple of times and we toured all around the States and we just sort of we just sort of set our minds to it and we just, and we went yeah. and just booked tours and went for it. And we were, again, it was kind of three like-minded individuals that really that kind of wanted no boundaries a bit. And it was kind of in that kind of early jam band scene, which um, sometimes has some connotations with a little bit of looseness. But the, the thing that I always kind of respected about it is just the openness to, to different music. So, yeah. you know, and it was right at the beginning of all that. So, so, we were touring a lot, and then when I that band sort of disbanded, and I ended up um, like in process moving to New York, and also right before then I was playing in a band called One Drum, and I met this great percussionist that we 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 instantly kind of had a, had a connection. His name is Cecilio Negro Jr. Um, and both of us had been wanting to start a Latin jazz band because I was that was something that was really piquing my interest at that mo- at that time is Cal Jader music and Tito Puente sure. and um, and and uh, Mango Santa Maria and all this stuff and so Cecilio and I started this band like and so I guess that was right around 2003 we started this band and um, and at the time it was just a trio and I knew from from my kind of travels around and and other people in town and also i you know playing some ska music and stuff like that through maybe the papers guys and i was friends with those guys i knew this guy named andy noble who was a really great music head and you know really really had a you know had some good taste in music and and a, and a variety of tastes that, that aligned with cecilio's in mind and i said hey i know this great bass player let's put a band together and that was like where de la bueno was born right oh, man. right then as a trio so 2003 and so over the years, you know, it was like, again, it's been since I'm I'm like the primary writer and arranger for the band. And I do a lot of the business and stuff, too, is like it's it still satiates my my kind of my eclectic range of taste. But then I can't that but then I focus it in this kind of in this world of of um, salsa music and Mozambique and, and Cha Cha and, and Wawanko and and some Brazilian forms and, and some kind of Afrobeat influences and yeah. stuff like that. With it. And then, and then, um, then I kind of going back and forth from Milwaukee to New York and I ended up coming back to Milwaukee because my father got very sick, uh, terminally okay. ill. And I was still touring with some bands that I had linked up with in New York. And so then it, um, in and amongst that with some really, really great musicians from New York that I was playing with and touring with, I had an opportunity to tour with Lee Scrap Perry for a couple of years. Oh, wow. Um, and so then and then, of course, really poignant um, in the last couple of weeks as he just passed away. So yeah. I've, been catching yep. up a lot, I've been catching up with a lot of musicians that I haven't talked to in a while, just reminiscing about our times um touring with scratch and so kind of under all that you know i was touring with uh you know yeah like with scratch's band and this band dub is a weapon and another band out of new york called dave hilliard and the rock study seven which is more like scottalites esque ska like kind of like jamaican jazz sure sure and then so i'd be bringing all those influences back to de la buena and kind of writing on them and you know finding weird cover tunes to do and then kind of then put then kind of shaping the treatments to de la buena and in the meantime de la buena's membership is just growing and growing and growing and we added another percussionist julio pabon and we added a drummer a kit drummer and then the horn started and now we're like basically you know upwards of like a 13 piece band at times oh, we've got you know, full array you know full array of horns three yeah. percussionists the drummer bass guitar um yeah and so then i guess and just over the years i've just continued to really i mean one of the biggest joys of that band for me is just arranging for a big band yeah and arranging for a big horn section uh and i really get into that a lot and so that's kind of where that brings us into today and so there's where our influences are and i've you know back in the day i was like just wanted to get my jazz rocks off yeah and, absolutely uh, and nowadays i really just i kind of live for the arrangement yeah, and I just I love arranging for a big band. Um, so long short story long, <laughs> that's how we've gotten to where I am now musically. That's kind of my my journey in a nutshell musically. But that's amazing though, because uh, you know there's a um, 
uh, there's a there was a story that I remember seeing. Uh, uh, Dave Grohl was talking to Pharrell Williams one time, and and he was uh, um, he was t- talking to him about um, you know the different influences in music that he had had growing up, and and uh, he didn't learn you know uh, any music from any teachers or anything, um, so it was mostly just what he heard around the house and things. And he he looked at uh, to Pharrell and he said, "Hey, uh, the the opening to Nirvana's uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit that that." that iconic drum, you know, a few hits. Uh, He said, I actually stole that from the Gap Band. And I'm thinking to myself in that moment, like, oh, my God, that does sound exactly like, you know, all those openings to some of those really funky, you know, uh, um, um, Gap Band stuff. And and, um, Pharrell, I think, just about lost, you know, he almost fell out of his seat. And it's just funny listening to you talk about the exact same thing that, Hey, you know, you can take literally an influence from what you would imagine is uh, a completely, you know, a type of music and throw it into the Z type of music. And uh, and it all is relevant, really. Musically, it, it all is the same language. And yeah. um, I could totally hear it in, in, you know, all the all the different things that I've listened to so far uh, from De La Buena. I can definitely hear, uh, you know, uh, different th- pieces from different places, you know. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's so cool. And now, so yeah, um, Valley Week, uh, you know, you're going to be playing at Third Space. This is, uh, of yeah. course, for the, the fifth anniversary of Third Space, and it sort of kicks everything off uh, with Valley Week uh, being from the, the 25th to the 2nd. Um, and, and you're going to be on the stage, I think, uh, what, 6 or 6.30? Six, six, 6 o'clock is, I think, is our slide. Awesome. Yep. And so... Hey, you know, I, I can't really honestly tell uh, anybody any more about why they should come in and listen to your music because it's, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. And like you said, um, there's a lot going on. Yeah, totally. Yep. Yeah. I and mean, we've had, and obviously we've all had, it's been a really long year, you know, yeah. with just the, the, the pandemic and, and everything. And I mean, I, I don't know if you have kids. I don't. You don't. Yeah. I, so yeah, I got three kids. And, um, you know, it's just been it's school is crazy. I know. For, and yeah, the yeah summer didn't feel like summer us. for anybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Then, like my daughter and I, what, where do we go? We went, Oh, you know, she just came on like some errand with me. I don't even know where we are going, but we just like, it was one day, like a couple weeks ago, right at the end yeah. like of August. And I was like, you know what? It feels like summer finally. Wow. Just like one night where maybe we went to cops or something where yeah. we went to Culver's and it was like, this is the first night this year that it actually felt like summer. Cause it was just sort of like, there's just a lot weighing on us and, yeah. and real heavy. And so, you know, I, honestly it's been, I'm also a carpenter and a tile guy. I do a lot of construction work Okay. and the last year has been a little, you know, it's been hard without music, but I sort of shifted my focus and, and I've been, you know, just kind of keeping my head down and doing the work and being for my family. And now all of a sudden there's all these shows coming up and, and as much as sometimes it's just a struggle to keep everything straight now getting, you know, just like just keeping it all together. I when I, when I get on stage and I have a chance to play music for people, it is just like, it's the biggest relief. It's such yeah. a, it's just like, you remember why you do it and you see people's joy at, at being able to be experiencing live music again. And yeah. it's sort of, it's a huge reminder. And in the meantime, I've been writing like the whole pandemic. I've been writing like a madman, you know, I've got so much new music. I've had to slow down on it just to like keep up with getting it to the band. Oh, I, mean, wow. I mean, it feels really nice to be moving to new music too. And again, all, yeah, all products of the influences of, of the past year musically and otherwise. So, right. um, you know, the opportunity to go do this thing for the, for Valley week is really, really great. Cause the rock, the green is just a, you know, is also a super, super cool organization that we've yes. worked with in the past. And we had a show set up with them during the pandemic that ended up getting canceled. Yeah. You know, it seemed like we were coming out of it and then we, we pull. And so it's just working with Lindsay and everything is just, it's really, really a joy. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I can't wait to uh, to meet you uh, in person, yeah. and uh, I, I know Russ and I both uh, plan on attending on the 25th, and and uh, potentially even powering the stage with our, uh, you know, uh, legs. I guess you know with the yeah. with the pedal powered bikes. I've only seen it in action. I've never tried my hand at it, so uh, we'll try to boost uh, boost as much power your way as we can. 
Excellent. Awesome. Maybe well, we'll even come with our Sabbath cover then. You awesome. Know, if we're going to have power, power pedaling. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to try to, to, to do as much as we can on that end to keep that stage turning. <laughs> so, Excellent. Yes. Awesome. Excellent. Well, Dave, I, I honestly, I can't thank you enough again for, for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to come and chat with us. And uh, again, we'll come and see you on the 25th. And I urge everybody that's listening to go do the same. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. All right. I am here with Lindsay Stevens of Rock the Green. Lindsay, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am doing well, just chugging along. Summer is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it seems to be coming to an end. The weather, at oh, least. Oh no, uh, no, no, don't say that. <laughs> I know, um, <laughs> but I, hey, you know, uh, I I tend to like it just a little on the cooler side. So that's been kind of nice to feel at least a little bit of that. But um, y- you know, and you know I, what? We still got more more fun to have. And that's what I was up. just going to say. Is the yeah. the celebration never ends though? So uh, we, you know, of course, uh, this this entire episode has been filled with. Uh, a lot of great individuals and a lot of great uh, uh, events that we've talked about. And, and that's what we're here to, to kind of go over as well. I mean, it's, Rock the Green seems to be everywhere this summer. Well, we're excited. You know, we're we're partnering with Third Space. Um, they've got their, as you know, you already chat about their the fifth anniversary coming up. And yeah. that's a kickoff day of Valley Week in Menominee Valley. Yeah, yeah, September 25th uh, is going to be an absolutely epic uh, day uh, for the Valley and in the Valley. So uh, we'll all be kind of coming together at Third Space and and uh, most of us meeting for the very first time in person. So I look forward to that. I do too. And you know what? We're going to be in the great outdoors at Third Space. If you haven't been to their the brewery down there, it's, it's a really neat spot. Yeah, I can't wait for everybody to see that that uh, that space. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, they have done exactly what they've set out to do: is create a third space. You know, exactly. Uh, so, kind of your workspace, home space, and <laughs> yep, exactly. And then yeah. you've got this incredible place to. Uh, sit outside, enjoy the uh, the fine Milwaukee uh, elements, and and uh, it's just a, it's a really great place, and I absolutely love the vibe that uh, that's out there. And um, so, I mean, hey, the twenty fifth will have V Funk playing. Uh, yeah, so we got so we got a little celebration. We got three bands, and it's going to be a zero waste event, like uh, Rock the Green always we always yeah. do. Some great live music local food and you know of course we got the great beer on tap thanks to third space yes so we were we're featuring the the famous um favorite fan favorite pedal power stage love it yeah yeah yeah. and you're gonna be on one of the bikes with russ i'm gonna give you the the best few minutes i've got (laughs) (laughs) and so yeah so the lineup we got uh 3 p.m it will the event hours are 2 2 p.m to to 10 Mm p.m And then we got V Funk, who's high energy funk band. Uh, they got a little old school funk, R and B, and blues. They're at three p.m. And then at six o'clock, we got De La Buena, um, a rock the green favorite. They performed at our birthday celebration way back in 2015. Wow. And then eight o'clock, yeah, eight o'clock, we got Derek Pritzel and the Gamble, a little country blues and Americana flavored rock. Yeah. Uh, and and what a what an incredible lineup for for you know that that full day of uh, of celebrating down there. It, it'll be absolutely amazing to hear all the different uh, music from from all of those three incredible bands. I'm um, looking very forward to to that, and then also to try out uh, a couple of beer releases that are happening. Uh, I believe on the exact same uh, you know in, in the exact yeah. same day. So. Uh, third space and uh, we've talked to Andy a little bit about it and uh, uh, there's going to be not only the the five-year anniversary beer five uh, which is kind of jumped from barrel to barrel uh, getting some some new and, and inviting flavors but also uh, something that uh, will uh, have your uh, logo right on it as well, yeah, the, well yeah, that's right the, I mean the, the rock the the green IPA which is uh, uh, amazing and and I'm, I'm glad that uh I'll have a chance to actually get my hands on uh, some of that. I know. I, I, I'm excited too, and I love uh, you know the creative, the design of it looks it looks pretty neat. 
It really does. It really does. Um, and you know what? A portion of the proceeds, because Rock the Green is a 501c3 nonprofit, mm-hmm. are going to be going back to, to Rock the Green. So not only is Rock the Green producing the event, but we're also um, Third Space's nonprofit partner. Because each year, Third Space selects a local nonprofit to support their anniversary party. And so, they, you know, thanks to Andy and all the folks over at Third Space, uh, they chose Rack the Green, so we're stoked about that. Yeah, and I, I mean, we've had a chance to uh, to work uh, with Andy. We've done at least one episode where we interviewed him, and then we uh, we actually just did a uh, a little you know personalized uh, a tour of the facility with Kevin, uh, and that was really really yes. cool too. So uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing both of them out there, and and hopefully they jump on a bike or two, and uh, we can all. Along uh, with you by your side. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, hey and Russ. <laughs> well, Russ. and you know what? Yeah, I do want to give a big shout out to all uh, the local cycling clubs that will be powering the stage and yeah. the concert. We've got Black Girls Do Bike, Cadence, the Velo Palms, and the Tosa Spokesman. So thanks to everybody for, for coming out to power the sound and lights. And they'll be doing all the work. I, I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I could power one light and and they are they are much more well equipped than i am for that so uh honestly thanks thanks to them for that and one other thing that i mentioned is if we're going to have eco education on site because we always uh have our eco champ partners or nonprofit partners showcasing you know all the important environmental sustainability work they're doing in and around milwaukee wisconsin so we're going to have urban ecology center and our Milwaukee Riverkeeper, Teens Grow Greens, City of Milwaukee's Environmental Collaboration Office, and also the City County Task Force on Climate and Economic Equity. There, and there's going to be, oh, one other thing. It's not environmental, but Girls Rock MKE and Ladies Rock MKE is going to be there as well. It's also a nonprofit. Awesome. We're going to have a fun day. It is going to be a, uh, a a very eventful day, that is for sure. I, I... I cannot wait to uh, to attend, and and I can't wait for everybody else to see uh, what what's going on down there and what what has been kind of in the works for this whole time. Yeah, this will be awesome. It'll be a great day to wrap up summer, and uh, you know, hopefully, it won't be snowing by then. You never know. I <laughs> oh yeah, I hope not. I'm not ready for that. I, no, like I said, I I'm definitely not a summer guy, but I'll tell you what, I'm certainly not a winter guy. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, as always, uh, I really appreciate you taking time to uh, to chat with us and um, getting us and involved you know what? somehow. I think this, is, this is our third collaboration. It is. Yeah. We've done on this podcast. We, we we really enjoy you guys. Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate uh, working with you as well. So it, it's been it's been an amazing uh, three three episode run with you so far. So I can't wait to see what what happens in the future, and I can't wait to meet you in person. Uh, yeah. on September 25th, along with go. anybody uh, else who uh, who is uh, going to be there. So that'll be awesome. That will be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lindsay. I really appreciate oh, thanks, it. thanks, Eric. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. That concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, Please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening. And remember, as always, watch watch out for deer on your way home. home.